Hello, my name is Charlene Stevens, and I am the director of Arcade Project Curatorial. Our current exhibition, Gay Gorilla, includes an artist film library in which each artist will answer three questions to define the new genre of queer abstraction. My work is ultimately about trying to understand code or really think about the ways in which society codes and decodes representations of blackness from a historical perspective, from a colloquial perspective, and then also um, in like a semiotic sort of way. Um, I'm really interested from a technical standpoint in lines, vectors, mathematics, and the computer. So pretty much everything that I make is mediated through some kind of digital means, either through a laser cutter, a CNC mill, digital embroidery, uh, things like that. I'm really invested in this idea of how uh, you can sort of abstract or remove a hand and then thinking about ways to sort of re, um, I call it like kind of rehumanizing the work through various modes of production. Uh, you'll notice in the work, there's a lot of hardware, uh, a lot of hard edges. I like the idea that we can import a different sort of visualization of labor. Uh, I kind of think a lot about the ways in which artistic gestures are fetishized by people that think about and collect art. Uh, people really like to fetishize a brushstroke, you know. So what happens when we try to fetishize other forms of labor that maybe seem more banal, maybe seem more um, domestic, maybe seem more like industrialized, uh, thinking about like kind of all, like, like blue collar labor in all of these ways that I'm really invested in figuring out a way to kind of romanticize that versus uh, romanticize methods of art making that sort of abstract uh, our understanding of who can participate in art. You know, I like the idea that anybody can be an active participant in art. And I like the idea that, um, you know, we can remove ourselves from this idea that art has to be or can only be this elitist thing that's held by all these gatekeepers. You know, I'm really into using my modes of production to try and tear some of those gates down. In terms of using abstraction in the work, uh, I often like to think of its use as kind of like a Trojan horse in all these ways. I'm really invested in making work about racism, um, about sexism, about gender. Uh, and I think that a lot of these topics are things that people typically, um, especially in the art world, say that they're really interested in talking about. Um, but when the reality of having to have those tough conversations uh, comes along, they tend to shy away. So I like the idea that I can use the work and the materials, you know, a lot of it is like wood, plexiglass, uh, you know, acrylic, plastic, uh, materials that have a high tactile quality, uh, materials that we are very familiar with and comfortable with, materials that people like to uh, sort of touch, materials that are seductive, and almost use it as kind of like a trap in order to lure people in to have you know, some of these difficult conversations. I think for a long time, um, abstraction has been a useful tool for me to achieve that. Uh, I think that at first blush, people see the work and they recognize it as uh, having a heavy investment in abstraction and that tends to make it uh, feel more accessible or like safer for people. And then it's only through like the further investigation where things tend to kind of open up. Uh, I'm really interested and invested in semiotics and the ways in which we sort of import meaning and extract meaning from shapes. Um, but I like to think of it more as like a dialogue between me and the viewer. I like to think of it as this exchange where there's no sort of perfect interpretation of what I'm presenting. Um, even for myself, 
uh, you know, I like the idea that I can throw out some of these things and that the viewer can have uh, some fun trying to decode what it means. And it's something that I get a lot out of trying to understand the ways in which they're trying to decode these things. Uh, language is super important, but from the perspective, at least for me, uh, of its messiness. You know, language is a very complicated thing. There's so many opportunities for misinterpretation. There's so many opportunities for um, miscommunication. And I think that working in this way allows me to kind of fully acknowledge that fact. It allows me to fully acknowledge the ways in which uh, things can break down, things can go wrong. Uh, but also the, you know, having an opportunity to celebrate those moments when that communication is real and it is valid and it's understood. Um, that's like when it sort of hits the best for me. So the works for the show in Gay Gorilla, um, it's been an interesting time right now um, as people who have maybe been shut off to some of these conversations I've been trying to have are allowing themselves to think about them more critically and think about their own um, participation in these things more critically. Uh, it's making me start to think about my own strategies in terms of doing this kind of work. You know, for so long I've been operating under the assumption that people in sort of like traditional art spaces, galleries, museums, don't want to have conversations about race, at least not sincerely. Uh, so now that that might be changing, you know, how does the work need to change in response to that? You know, is there a need for me to still still like conceal some of those messages or can they be more overt? Can they be um, more present? And honestly, the thing that kind of galvanized it for me was that image of the politicians wearing the kente cloth. Uh, it just seemed like such a bizarre and also like hyper performative and super problematic ways. Um, for people to be handling what's going on right now. So that kind of galvanized it for me in terms of what these works needed to be. You know, it became about using these patterns um, that have largely for centuries now been co-opted by uh, sort of Western white uh, narratives through the white gaze. Uh, it's about recentering that. So the patterns and the textures in the work are heavily influenced by um, African patterns, um, both as a way to sort of call attention to the use of these patterns as I'm really interested in thinking about how these patterns get used as like political tools, uh, at least right now. So thinking about a way to open up a conversation about um, sort of legible Africanness as a Thing that has the potential to be politicized is, is sort of where I'm at right now. Um, and then also just, you know, thinking about all the ways in which the world is kind of fucked up right now and thinking about um, what needs to happen come November. In terms of art conversations, I don't know. I think, you know, again, I think that I have a heavy investment in abstraction, in color, in color theory, the psychological use of color, um, the ways in which color has been used throughout history uh, to talk about various things. All of that's kind of part of the soup for the work that I do. Um, in terms of conversations that are happening right now, um, you know, I think for a long time, especially for Black artists, there's been a heavy investment in figuration and making figurative work. 
and it's something that I've been really resistant to for a long time. Uh, I just really believe very strongly in the power of abstraction, but also in the power of semiotics, and the work has really been about trying to figure out how to marry those two things in a way that feels sincere and in a way that um, can hopefully challenge the viewer. I like the idea that the works that I make have the potential to sort of unfold over time um, as someone's familiarity with a particular sort of uh, glyph, icon, shape, however you want to call it, uh, their relationship to that shape can grow and change and become deeper and more dynamic over time. And then like the relationships between these various things get more complex as you invest yourself and your energy and your your mental capacity into deciphering what it means or has the potential to mean. Um, that to me is like the real work of language and communication. It's, it's about understanding and it's about um, opening yourself up to different ways in which we can understand each other. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to learn more about Arcade Project Curatorials program, you can find us on arcadeprojectzine.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram and on Artsy.